Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us this month. So this month's mini series, we're going to go through personal finance. And what we're going to do is give you more tips and tricks and tools to really succeed and build a solid foundation for your financial plan. All too often we come across people that are, you know, trying to get to the top of the pyramid, but the foundation is really weak. They don't have a proper budget or emergency savings plan or will or any of that. So let's work on building a solid foundation and then we can work out from there. And if you're watching this video saying, oh, I already have this covered, I have a good budget, everything's in place. The reality is so many of us are, have a few gaps in that. And again, if you don't have a perfectly solid foundation, as you start to build up, there can be you know, some flaws and, and, and crushing there. So make sure that we focus on that foundation. So over the next five weeks, we're gonna give you a bunch of tools and tips and tricks to make sure that you're on track. So this week, week one, we're gonna cover off budgeting basics. So, you know, there's many ways to budget, but the two main uh, ways that we like to do it with our clients are either you look back over the last two months. So take the last two months of spending. This takes a lot of time, obviously, whether you rip it out to an Excel spreadsheet, whatever you like to do, look at the last two months. The other option is to track for the next two months. So we like to have two months because sometimes you can have a large monthly expense. It doesn't, you know, maybe it's spread out over the next 12 months. So looking at either the last two months or the future two months um, is the best way to kind of start building a budget off of. So if you're building out a budget, there's some simple ways to do it. You can do an Excel spreadsheet. That's how I like to do it personally. Um, we've created our own kind of Excel uh, spreadsheet budget template at Parallel Wealth. We'll put the link below. You can download that. It's absolutely free. It's nice because it gives you, you know, not just areas you know, where you put your budget numbers in, but it will also kind of give you a number that you should be spending based on your income. So if your income is $5,000 a month, it's gonna say that you should be spending X, you know, on food or X on housing or whatever it is. So we, we try and give you some numbers behind what you should be spending and you can compare it to what you currently are spending. If you're more of an app tracking person, you can use something like Mint or YNAB, you need a budget. Um, or your bank probably has you know, half decent budgeting tool now. I know most banks and credit unions in Canada will have some sort of budgeting tool built into their software. So you can try that out as well. So there's lots of options for you. Find something that works well for you that you can follow that you'll actually use. That's the main thing. And again, go back two months or forward two months and build that budget from there. So the number one thing our clients will come back to us after they put their budget together is, okay, great, Adam, I have it, but where do I save money? Where do I trim some of the expenses? So I wanna give you five areas that we find that we can trim a lot of the expenses out of a client's budget. So the number one area is utility bills. So whether it's your internet, cell phone, home phone, um, whatever it is, uh, TV, you know, tell us Shaw, Rogers, wherever you live, Bell, wherever you live in the country, there's probably some money to be saved there, whether it's 20, 30, $50 a month. Okay, so if you're with TELUS, let's say, give them a shout, you know, ask if there's a better plan for your home phone, for your internet, for your TV, for your cell phone, whatever services you have with them, there's probably a better deal out there. So a lot of times it just takes, you know, a 10 or 20 minute phone call, ask, and it can save you 10, 20, $30 a month. Um, I did this not too long ago, we reduce our monthly costs with TELUS by $50 a month just by making a 10 minute phone call. So again, that's $600 a year that we're saving just on a short phone call. So you know, reach out to them, see if there's a better offer for them, or maybe your services are more than you actually need. So check that out as well. The second thing to look at are insurances. So you know, you, you probably are paying a lot of money in insurances, you know, home insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, disability, critical illness, all the insurances. You know, time to review that. Maybe you're not paying too much. Maybe the coverage isn't right for you. Maybe you've outdated, whatever it is. Review your insurances. There might be a bit of money to save there, uh, especially home insurance. Shop that around. That's often a place where you can save some decent money on a month to month basis. The third area and probably the biggest killer of budgets is eating out. So review your eating out and liquor budget. Uh, often that's off the charts for people. Um, you know, try and rein that back for a few months, especially right now with COVID as we're going through this, you know, skip the dishes and Uber Eats and all this. It's so convenient to just order on the app, have it delivered to your house, but those bills add up. It's a lot more expensive to eat out than to make food at home. So just review your budget there uh, and see if you've been spending too much, especially over the last year, and if you can pull that back a bit. The fourth thing, and I fell prey to this, is monthly services that you're paying for, but you aren't using. Um, so for us, um, I covered this in a video a while back too, but uh, Disney Plus. So we were 
you know, using Disney Plus, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. So we had three kind of TV services on top of our cable, and we weren't using them all. So we ended up cutting uh, Disney Plus. We're probably going to cut Netflix here in the next little bit. Um, my kids still use it a bit. But again, there's probably monthly services that you're paying for that you aren't using or you aren't using to the full benefit. So just review those. It could add up again to 20 30 50 even up to $100 a month that you could knock off uh, on services that you just aren't using anymore. And the fifth thing, and this has saved us the most money by far in our family, is online grocery shopping. So we do all of our grocery shopping now through click and collect on Superstore. So Superstore, it's, you know, the, the groceries are a bit cheaper, but just not going into the store, impulse buying, all of that has saved us a ton of money. So put aside that Superstore pricing is usually a bit cheaper, just look at the online shopping. So it could be with Save On Foods or Walmart, wherever you wanna go grocery shopping, it doesn't matter. It's more the principle around impulse buying. So you're not going into the store and impulse buying a bunch of stuff. My wife and I, um, our guess is we're saving around 30 to $50 every single week on our groceries. And I know that's a huge number, but we've kind of looked at it based on what we were spending before online grocery shopping to now. And that's roughly what we're saving, 30 to $50 every single week on just random stuff that we're not buying because we have a list. My wife goes online, orders it, I go pick it up. So it's very simple, it's online. Um, to tie into that, look at Amazon. Amazon's a great place to buy stuff. It ships straight to your door. You're not wasting money on gas to go to the store. And again, the pricing and simplicity of it is usually really convenient and priced really well. So take a look at that. So grocery shopping and other essentials, look to use you know an online grocery store that's uh, available to you in your area and Amazon, you know, sign up for Amazon Prime and get you know the one or two day delivery as well. Okay, finally for this budget area, I wanna go through three ways to kind of help you follow through with your budget and actually have some accountability and, and, and make sure that you have success within your budget. So here's three things that I personally implement for myself and our family budget that's worked really well for us and I know it's worked well for a lot of our clients, so here they are. Number one, have an accountability partner, whether that's your spouse or friend or whoever it is, have someone that holds you accountable on a monthly basis to review your budget to make sure that you're staying on track. Number two is have a plan for your budget. So if you know if you have a tough time overspending in your budget, go to a cash envelope system. So if you're you know if food budget is five hundred dollars a month, put five hundred dollars cash in an envelope at the beginning of the month, and once it's done, it's done. Okay. So go to a system and have a plan that fits your budget and your kind of psychological and mindset around you know running your budget. So have a budget plan. And the third thing I like to do is have a cheat sheet on what those extra costs are really costing you. So I put some information below here, but you can run out like, okay, if you spend an extra $50 a month on something now, what does that cost you long-term for your retirement? Okay, so a lot of times we look at it and say, ah, oh, it's 50 bucks. Okay, well, $50, that's $600 a year. If you're 20 years to retirement or 10 or 30, it doesn't matter. There's a number to that, a future cost to that. What is that costing you, that little $50 purchase? It adds up like exponentially. So make sure you review that again. The details and the numbers are below on how to calculate that, but make sure you look at that as well. That's the third part of making sure I have some accountability in my budget. So thanks for joining us for the week one of your personal finance. So again, today we went through budget and kind of the tips and tricks. So there's some tools, there's links below. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, put comments below on what works for you in your budget and where you find yourself overspending. I think a lot of us overspend in the same areas, but leave a comment below where you find yourself overspending and let's see if there's some trends there. And if there are, I'll throw in another video to give you some more tips and tricks on how to reduce spending in those troubled areas. So thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoy these videos, hit the thumbs up. It really does help get this content out to more people and we really do appreciate it. So thanks again for joining us and have a great day.